What is going on today guys? Welcome back. We are jumping right into it. We are at the shop and tonight we are going to be installing our new turbo and our new manifold on the dually. So uh, real quick, shameless plug, the next video that comes out after this one will include all of the details of the new Wrenchworks uh, winter launch with all of the jackets and flannels that we have going on. So make sure you guys stay tuned for the next video. Anyway, jumping right into it. Before I show you guys the new turbo and manifold setup, I want to go over just a couple details and really just some parameters of what we were looking for when we were choosing the new turbo and manifold for the dually. So first off, we wanted to keep the turbo in the stock location. We did not want to do a second gen swap on this thing quite yet. We just got a brand new exhaust. We just got a brand new intake. We really weren't looking for a second gen style swap. We really wanted to keep the turbo in the factory location. Number two, we did not want to lose our exhaust brake. Super, super important on this truck. Uh, yes, there is a better option possibly coming down the road that might include the last two things that I mentioned. But for now, we want to keep the factory location and our exhaust brake. So two big things right off the bat. Third, uh, the power goal that we were shooting for is really right around like 650, maybe 700 tops. More really along the lines of 6, 650. So we want to try and maintain uh, factory-like or the quick spooling response that the factory charger provides. So... Those are a couple things that were really important when we were choosing the setup for this truck. All right, so keeping all of those details in mind, what turbo and manifold setup did we go with? What is going to perform the best, be the most reliable? That is what we have chosen. We have chosen the best possible combo for that application. All right, I'm not gonna make you guys wait any longer. Here's the parts that we got. Oh, yes. Here's what we got. We got a Steed Speed manifold in the factory location. This thing is so awesome. Coupling that with a Fleece Cheetah. Fleece Cheetah 63 millimeter charger. I am so pumped to put this on. And then we're also gonna be hanging all of this from the cylinder head with Fleece's new ARP stud hardware. Now, I've had manifold, I've had studs before uh, to put manifolds on. These are by far the nicest. They better be because they are not cheap, but these definitely are the nicest stainless manifold stud hardware I have ever seen. So we're going to be using these as well. Uh, again, I will put all the links down below for all of this stuff for the charger, the manifold, uh, and these studs as well. Let's check out these manifolds. The factory manifold just was not going to cut it. Now I will say this, you can put a uh, fleece cheetah charger on your factory manifold. You can do that. If you want the best possible combination, you're going to want one of these things. These are awesome. Your factory manifold, a uh, fourth gen or a third gen factory manifold can still crack. I actually have seen them crack on my dad's truck. We had a cracked one, so we did have to go to a different manifold. So uh, these can still crack. They still are a cast piece. Uh, they really are not meant for uh, optimal performance, uh, quicker spool, lower EGTs. Uh, they're really just a factory piece. It will get the job done, but not anywhere near as good as the Steed Speed piece. You guys already know I've shown you guys a lot of Steed Speeds. These things are just a piece of of art, just a super, super, really well put together piece, uh, really designed for the best power gains, lower EGTs, quicker spool, uh, just overall meant to flow way better than your factory piece. Has EGT drive pressure ports, um, really nice flowing manifold for sure. Inside here, super, super well. I am so pumped to be putting this on the truck you guys have no idea so let's move on to the turbo guys i i don't think there is one thing that there is not to love about this fleece cheetah charger so keeps your exhaust brake brand new actuator on this charger not reused uh when you get it brand new actuator very very important because a lot of times uh if you have issues with your factory charger it could actually be from the actuator so uh reliability wise this thing is built to last just as long as your factory charger uh utilizing a big well i say big but big for a factory charger 63 millimeter wheel um, i know there's bigger out there but again we want to not lose any drive ability whatsoever. We want to keep the fastest spool as possible. Uh, we don't need anything huge to hit our uh, 6650 goal. So this thing is going to be able to do that with a breeze. Uh, just comparing size wheels here, you can visibly 
just see how much larger it is. Also utilizing a new bigger exhaust wheel on the back side of here. If you guys, I'll put a link up in the top of the video here. Uh, we kind of went over actually what goes into making a fleece cheetah charger when we were out at fleece uh, in Indiana. We went over all of that. So I'll put a link up here, go check out that video as well. Shows them uh, machining everything, how they go together, uh, really uh, how well they are built. So that is the turbo we are gonna be using. So another cool thing I wanna mention about that fleece cheetah charger, say you're a guy who doesn't really care about making a whole lot of power, your truck is pretty much almost completely stocked your factory turbo goes out you want to put a factory unit back in there maybe you want to get some power down the road but really you just want to put a factory charger back in you go to the dealer you do the work yourself but if you're looking at a factory whole set uh, charger those factory chargers are not cheap by any means in some applications some of these years uh, depending on if it's a 10 or if it's a 13 and up or if it's a cabin chassis some of those factory whole set chargers the fleece cheetah charger is actually cheaper than a brand new whole set so that's just something to keep in mind if you guys have a factory turbo that goes out and you want to put a like a oem style unit back in there you might want to check that out as well i think that's pretty cool so uh this is going to handle our needs and if maybe if you just have a factory truck and you want to throw something a little bit bigger in that my friends is going to conclude our parts talk for this evening we are done talking we're going to get to working on installing these parts on the dually here tonight we're going to get this thing done get it fired up this evening uh again for this application for those set of goals uh i do strongly, strongly feel like this is the best combination of parts that you can use to achieve that. So if that sounds like you, again, you can always go check out fleeceperformance.com. Greg A18 will save you some bucks on some of this stuff if you want to check it out. So I'll link all that stuff, like I said, down below. Use Greg A18, save you some bucks. Anyway, that is it. Let's start working. We still do have to swap over a couple little things from the factory charger, like the oil feed. We're gonna get that swapped over um, and then go ahead and bolt our turbo to the manifold outside of the truck. This needs to get, this little elbow piece gets to uh, get reconnected to the backside of our exhaust housing. And then we'll be ready to stuff this back in the truck. Alrighty guys, let me catch you up here briefly. We have been making some progress. Not as quickly as I had thought so. Uh, this thing has fought me every single way. I honestly would almost bet that it takes less time to install a second gen swap than it does to uh, install one of these cheetahs. But uh, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. This is the first time I'm honestly, I think replacing a factory turbo with another factory turbo location. Um, this coolant riser pipe here is a pain in the butt. Putting this thing down in as one piece is a pain in the butt. Uh, the studs look amazing. They definitely look amazing, and I think in a second gen application, they would serve some purpose better than uh, here. I put them in the head, expecting to be able to just slide the manifold on, kind of like a second gen swap. Not the case with the factory exhaust down there. You don't really have enough room to kind of put it into place. I ended up having to take uh, cylinder six through four, out. I left one through three and then I could slide it on then I had to kind of stick them in one at a time but so just keep that in mind Other than that all we've got accomplished is the boot is back on the compressor housing the exhaust is tightened up all we have to really do now is uh, get our sensors plugged in get our oil and coolant lines plugged in get that drain gasket on the bottom in um, and just wrap up a couple other things so Really not gonna video much of that. We kind of videoed all that coming apart, so you guys kind of know exactly where everything is. The coolant lines up here. We'll get all that back together, and then I will catch back up with you guys when we are pretty much ready to uh, to fire this thing up, throw some coolant in it, 
Um, we'll be we'll be there we'll be there in no time. We'll uh, we'll still get this thing fired up by the end of the night. guys we are all set finally this thing fought me the entire way it is so much later in the night uh, definitely did not anticipate it taking this long but it did I can admit it it kicked my butt I don't know why but it's done everything is good uh, one thing I do want to point out one cool thing uh, easy link uh, when you go over some big bumps and have some things fall off you can see our EGT port back there. I do have something plugged in. That actually, uh, through the factory computer, through HPP, I'm not sure if other guys do it too. The guys at HPP, uh, you can get this kit. And uh, it has an EGT port, and it actually plugs into a factory plug underneath the truck, and then you can read EGTs through EasyLink. Uh, no gauge or anything else required, but that one uh, little wire kit actually runs down uh, underneath there. Where it connects is right down here, and then you can see we kind of have it tucked up inside of the factory. I don't know what you want to call that, but got it wrapped up inside that. Kind of goes up along there, and you can kind of see it follows the uh, dipstick, kind of comes out right there. Maybe not, but you can't really see. It's nice tucked away uh, inside of that stuff. So uh, everything looks good underneath here. Let's take a look-see. There you go. You can see the drain. The bottom coolant line, they all look dry, good to go. Had it running for about, mm, I'd say 10, 15 minutes. No leaks, no signs, no check engine lights. Everything seems to be good. Sounds good. It's honestly a shame that this thing has to get covered up so much by all this coolant line, stuff like that. You can barely, you can barely see the beauty down there. And of course, what would a job be without a little knuckle bleeding? So that is going to wrap up this job. It did kick our butts, but we did accomplish our mission. Uh, the turbo is done. We are ready to go. Actually, the only thing we got to do is put in the uh, inner fender liner. I'll do that tomorrow. So tomorrow, we will get this beast out on the street, give you guys some sound clips, give my overall consensus on how it's performing, how it performs, how it sounds, all of that good stuff. It's completely pitch dark, and it's almost 12 o'clock, so it is time to go home. We got plenty of more time tomorrow to do that so make sure you guys stay tuned for tomorrow's video we'll be driving this thing we got a couple other little things planned and the wrench works launch is going to be live tomorrow so make sure you guys stay tuned for that stuff uh, that's going to do it as always hit the like button before you leave guys subscribe if you have not already and again there's always one thing that i forget to tell you guys always always escapes me if you guys are interested in any of this stuff, go check out the links down below. Um, that's it. Love you guys. See you tomorrow. See you.